Hello everyone, welcome back. So today's project is a foraging pouch. Um, I know a lot of you already have them. For, you, for those of you that don't know what it is, it's basically a pouch you put on your belt and when you open it up, it's got a bag in it. Now they can be made out of leather, they can be made out of polyester, whatever, you know, uh, the person who made it um, used. Uh, you could buy them online. But I highly recommend you going to check out Mitchell at Guns, Knives, and Beer. Um, and his website is Colorado Bushcraft. And he gifted me one a few years ago. Um, thank you, brother. I appreciate it. I'm going to put links in the description so you could see them and you could order them. They're um, pretty inexpensive, high quality, handmade in the USA. Um, you know, and obviously that's where I got my idea from. <laughs> Um, and like Mitchell always says, I'm miniaturizing stuff. So mine is going to be smaller than the ones that he sells. Um, I've also seen Nikki St. Laurent make one. Absolutely awesome. Um, I'm going to try to put the, remember to put all these links in the description. Um, and then, so the way we're going to start this project out is I have a wax canvas bag. Um, I'll put a link in and exactly how I made this. It's a drawstring bag. Okay. It's act I actually just made it so it is stiff, okay, which it will loosen up. So we got the drawstring bag, and then the size that I wanted it is, we got 8 inches by 9 and a quarter. So I think this is a good size. You can fit a lot of stuff in here. Um, I know when I'm walking around, I find little pieces of shirt and whatnot. Um, I just put them in my pocket, they, you know, putting rocks in your pocket actually doesn't feel too good. <laughs> but uh, this will be good as an emergency bag to put water in because it's waxed. Um, this will be great to, you know, uh, so many things, berries, tinder, um, you know, smaller mushrooms. Uh, you know, it's endless the amount of things you could use this for. Um, and again, you can, if you're making this yourself, you can make it any size you want. It could be 8 inches long, uh, 8 inches wide by 12 inches long, 13, 14, 15 inches long. Again, you're not limited to what you do. Um, so I picked this size basically because I already had this piece of canvas waxed. And I said, I'm just going to use that. So it folds up in three this way. Then you fold it this way, and you fold it this way. Okay, and you end up with a pretty small little package here. And this ends up being two and three quarters by three. Okay. So now I have a piece of veg tanned leather here. And the way this is going to go is, this is going to get attached in here. This will fold up here, and then this will come down here. Okay, and it'll have a snap here. Um, and then on the back, there's going to be a belt loop, and there'll be a snap on the bottom of the belt loop so that you um, can take it on and off your belt easily. Okay, so the first, uh, again, I'm going to show you stuff as I do it, not necessarily film myself like cutting this because, again, things that I think are pretty obvious and boring, <laughs> like cutting a piece of leather. Um, just it makes videos so long and I, I used to do that when I made videos I they would just be so so long but if anyone has any questions on something they didn't see me actually do I'll gladly answer it. okay so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim this piece of leather to its final size okay so what I mean by that is basically I don't need all this extra here so we only need it to be See, like on this edge here, you got maybe an eighth of an inch, you know, sticking out. And that's it, right? It doesn't have to be um, this wide. So I'll trim this to the size I want, which is basically, so we have two and three quarters. So I'll make it probably three inches, okay? So right now it's three and a half. So this will be three inches wide. And then 
I need it to be, let's see, we come up to here, and then come down. Yeah, and I'll probably have to cut about a half an inch off of here. So I'll bring you back when this is trimmed up, and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so I have it trimmed up. In case anybody is curious, I just use a regular um, utility knife. So we got it cut. So this will go like this. This will fold up. And this will come down. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just trim this a little bit. Um, I think I'm going to just cut it like this. Just nip that corner off. Um, yeah, I'm just going to nip the corner off. I might do the same thing just to make it match here. So let me nip those corners off. Again, I'll just, just be using a sheetrock knife. I call it a sheetrock knife, but it's a utility knife. So I'll nip those corners off, and I'll bring you back, and I'll show you that. All right, so I got the corners nipped off. So here's where we're looking. This will go in here. This will go up to there, and this will come down to there. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find um, the center point here, and I'm going to uh, just use a hole punch, and I'm going to punch a hole that it's going to get ready to accept the um, snaps, okay? Because I like to punch the holes before I dye it. This way I can get some dye in the holes too, all right? Um, so let me uh, get that situated, and I will bring you back. All right, so my holes are punched. Again, it's a lot of, you know, doing this and then seeing how it looks and fitting it and all of that good stuff. So we got that done. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to figure out um, on the back where I'm going to put the snap for the belt loop. Okay, so I don't obviously don't want it down here, so it's going to have to be around here somewhere. Now, my belt is an inch... I think an inch and three quarters so I got plenty of room back here hopefully you can see that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the snap on a flat part right here so we're going to be looking at around from the top probably two and three quarter ish like right here in the center so I'll put a hole for the snap here um, and then uh, we'll do a little bit of uh, dyeing. And then I'll make the belt loop. All right. I'll bring you back when that hole is in. And then uh, we'll take it to the next step. All right. So I have all the holes punched. Okay. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tool, which is a beveling tool. And I'm going to bevel the sides just like this. Okay. That takes that sharp edge off. So I'm going to do that all the way around this on both sides. And then I'll bring you back and I'll show you with that. All right, so it's all beveled up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Nice smooth edges. If you could remember from a second ago, I had these kind of squared off. I didn't like the way it looked. So I just rounded this off on my belt sander. <coughs> Got to have the sound effects. <coughs> Very simple to do, or you could have just cut it round originally, or it could have left it the way it was. But that's how these projects go, when, at least when I'm doing them, they kind of evolve, and I'm like, oh, I'll do this instead, or I'll do that instead. All right, so now I'm up to the point where I'm going to dye this. While this dye is drying, I'm going to make a uh, belt loop. And basically, the belt loop is going to look like this. Obviously, it's going to be wider and a little longer, but it's going to have a snap on the bottom like where this hole is and then at the top part I'm going to fold it over like this so that this will go like this this will attach here and then up here it'll be folded over and then come down and I'm thinking of actually doing rivets um, I've never done rivets in leather before, but um, I like the way they look, and they're obviously obviously a ton faster 
than sewing it. Um, now, uh, saddle stitching I've done, I've showed many, many times, and it's a reliable way of doing it, but I want to try maybe um, putting some rivets in there. So I'm going to dye this. I'm going to make the uh, belt loop part, which is going to be right around that area. And then um, I'll bring you back when all of those pieces are dyed. And then I'm going to figure out if I'm going to pick up some rivets or if I'm going to sew it in. So I'll bring you back. All right, so I got it all dyed up. Now, I know I mentioned I was going to do it a saddle tan, which was this color. Um, but I did not like the way it was coming out. Um, this was just a sample piece, but it was coming out very blotchy. So I only had a small bottle of the saddle tan. Um, and like I said, I put a couple coats on. I let it kind of dry in between, and I, I told this sometimes when I like that mottled kind of color. Um, I did that with my um, Harbor Freight axe when I modified it. I made the sheath and the guard. Um, I actually added some black in it, and I kind of, you know, made it like that. But I didn't like the way it was coming out on this particular piece of leather. Um, that's the thing with leather. It's organic. It doesn't all you know react the same um so this piece that i happen to have i did not like the way it was looking so i do have like a quart of black and black is always my go-to so i decided to dye it black okay so now i'm in the next stage now veg tan leather gets very very stiff which is awesome when you're making holsters and knife sheets and whatnot um but I don't want this to be really, really stiff, okay? I want this to be relatively supple um, because it's gonna be folded, folded over. If I just folded this now, I would put like cracks in it, okay? So the next step is um, I'm going to use this Lexol leather conditioner. This is the only thing that I use um, on my leather product. Uh, product products <laughs> I do not use any kind of oil um, I was told by I mentioned this a long time ago um, Mr. DeSantis of DeSantis holsters you may have recognized the name he had uh, said never ever ever put oil of any type on any leather products Lexol is the thing to do and with this less is more but I'm gonna put multiple coats okay because i want it to be supple as supple as i could get it okay um and then after i put the lexol on i'm going to burnish the ends and burnishing the ends just means you're going to get something this happens to be a burnishing tool that i made okay you're basically just going to rub the ends like this okay now you can use a tool like this that you make you could use a wooden dowel you can use a spoon, anything that's smooth that you're not going to scratch it and you're just going to burnish it like this. Now, I also made a burnishing machine which makes this go much faster. Um, and I'm going to, you know, in reality, I'm going to use my machine. Um, and I'll put a link in the description of a video where I show my burnishing machine. So after this is conditioned and burnished, um, I will bring you back, okay? And I have an idea where I said I was going to put rivets on this. Well, I came up with another idea that I think is really cool. So um, we'll bring you back for the next stage. All right. So I got it all conditioned. As you can see, it's much more supple. Now, I don't want it too, too soft, but I want to be able to bend it and not get any cracks in it. Okay. So it's burnished. You got a nice burnishing on it both pieces. As you can see, I kind of started to shape it while I had a conditioner on it to get it into the final shape. Now, you might notice I have two holes here. What I decided to do was, I'm going to use these Chicago screws. It's basically a screw and a post. And I'll tell you why I'm going to use this as soon as I unscrew this. Okay, you might have seen me use these on when I did my axe video, but I think the real name of them are, let's see, 
screw posts. <laughs> okay, I always call them Chicago screws. I don't know why. Um, but I, I think I read why they call them Chicago screws, but that's the name I always use. Okay, so the theory behind this is, so this is going to be the belt loop and the snap, right, that's going to end up going here. And what I'm going to do is, once I get all the snaps and everything in place, which I'm going to do next, if you never did snaps, you got four pieces. Um, use the little anvil with the setting tool, okay? I've shown that in previous videos, but um, I'm going to put two holes in the back here, and I'm going to actually use the two holes and these Chicago screws to hold the bag in, okay? Um, that's where I said I was thinking about riveting it. Um, so I was thinking about it and I said, you know what, if I put Chicago screws in there, if for some reason I ripped the bag, but then again, I made the bag, so I don't expect it to rip. <laughs> High quality stuff from the Minichetti household. <laughs> but no, seriously, if I rip it, um, you know, or it gets nasty for whatever reason, you know, and I want to change it, or maybe I want to make it a little longer or wider or whatever, I could do that just with a screwdriver. Um, maybe I'm out there, whatever, and I, I got stuff in it, and I, I, I don't want to have the bag hanging from, you know, this part. I could take it off and put it on the side. I have so many advantages to be able to take the bag off of, of this. So that's the way I'm going to go. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put all my snaps in. Oh, actually, I'm going to use some Johnson Paste Wax on this, okay? Now, if you read this, it actually says it's for wood, metal, leather, and plastics. Um, and I just found out they discontinued making this. Um, and some guy inquired with the company if it was true, and they said it was true. They're discontinuing this because they wanted, I guess, the way the sales were going, other products were selling more. So they were going to discontinue this to make room for other stuff. Um, I've had this one, this is what, 16 ounces, one pound. I've probably had this for 30 years. You don't need a ton of this stuff when you're using it. Um, but it's funny, I was looking up prices. This one pound can goes for, I've seen it for $29.99, $34.99. The prices are going crazy because it's discontinued. So if you see this in a store somewhere at a reasonable price, I would grab it. So I'm going to put a little paste wax on it. Um, when I get that done, I'm going to put the snaps on, and then I'll bring you back. All right, so I got the wax and the snaps on. We're looking good. I'll do a little final cleaning and polishing when I get it all together. So the way it's going to work is the bag, obviously, is going to go in here. And then this is going to fold over. And then it snaps. Okay, so we got that, and then this is going to be the belt loop, and I'm going to fold these over. I want to find exactly where that needs to go, punch two holes for these posts in this leather and in the back of the bag, okay? Very simple process, and then I'll come back and we'll put these screws together, and we'll wrap this one up. All right, all right, so the holes are punched in the back here and through the bag. So let's start to assemble this. And the way it's going to go is like this. Let's put it through the bag first. Made these pretty tight. Come on now, go through there. You know, the punch is tapered, so the outside of where I punched it is actually a little bit... I'm just going to loosen that a little tiny bit. And I should be able to get that through. Man, that don't want to go through. Did 
Did I make that the right size? Let's try it from this size. Side. Yeah. I did. And again, when you're filming things, it's so finicky. It really is. Ah, really? I mean, really? That is pretty hilarious. When I mean it's pretty hilarious, it really isn't. <laughs> Let's try to look at it from the back side here. Man, I can't believe that will not go through. Trials and tribulations of a leather project. <laughs> oh, man, that was brutal. These should go on easy because it was punched from that side. All right. They went in easy. Now we screw these in. Now, and I could snap this back, and there's my belt loop, and that's how that looks on the inside. Oh, I like that. I like that. All right, we tuck this in here, fold this over, up here, up here, take this, boom. <laughs> All right, so we got it. There it is. Hot dang. <laughs> so this is my first foraging pouch. I definitely like it. You got the snap on the back. You could put it on your belt, take it off. Flip that open. Drop your bag down. And there you have it. And you still can use the drawstring. Again, it's, it's pretty stiff because it's uh, newly made, but you get the idea. You can still use the drawstring. Open that back up. Pop that down there. Fold that way, fold that way, fold that way. You got it in there. Take this. And there it is. A little compact, gosh, probably like two and a half inches by three inches or something like that. I definitely dig it. This is a little, yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm very, very pleased with it. I hope you enjoyed that. Gives you a little inspiration to make one yourself. Um, it really wasn't hard. I'll be honest with you, the, the hardest part of this, obviously, was putting those posts in. <laughs> but again... The trick to those posts is um, 
the punch is tapered. So try to punch your hole from the side you're going to put the post that um, is going to receive the screw part. Okay? Like you saw when I put this end on, it went in very easy because I remembered and I punched it the right way. Um, otherwise, you have to really kind of mess around with it. But uh, I'm definitely digging it. I hope you get a little inspiration from it. Um, besides the putting those posts in, the hardest part of this was basically making the wax canvas bed because you got to wax the canvas and then sew it and all that nonsense. But the leather work is pretty... Um, generic and easy there, there wasn't any stitching involved um, you know you could get pre-dyed leather and you don't have to dye it uh, you know so again pretty easy to make I definitely dig it I hope you get some inspiration from it and make yourself one um, and I'll try to remember to put all the links in the description for everything I was talking about so uh, there it is my very first homemade foraging pouch so thanks for coming along i hope you all are doing well i always appreciate your views and your comments and i'm sending you all much much love my brothers and sisters and we'll see you on the next one